evening. It's good to have each and every one of you. Hey, just want to give you a couple announcements before we get started tonight um, for another great service of revival. Um, want to remind you that the rest of this week after tonight, we're going to be at 630. All right, so uh, mark your calendars, set your alarms, however you need to do that, right? So you can be back Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 630. All right. One other announcement I want to make sure you're aware of. If you can help us, uh, we have the Easter egg hunt coming up here in just a couple weeks. And so if you can help in any way, Pastor Grace is the one that uh, you need to see. Uh, there's candy donations. Um, I think they're looking for Easter bunnies. So Jerry, you want to be an Easter bunny? All right. Just, yep. All right. So they need a couple of those. And um, But yeah, they're just, they're looking for some help in that. And uh, we're hoping, the plan is this year they're opening it back up to our community. And uh, before we shut this down, Pastor Tim, do you remember, what was our count before we shut down the Easter egg hunt because of COVID? Didn't we have around 200? 225. And that's just for our community. So we have an opportunity, once again, just to love on our community and just let them know that we love them and we care about them and just want to share the good news of Jesus with them, all right? And so uh, if you can help, uh, take part in that. So, hey, let me have a quick word of prayer, and then I'll turn it over to you guys, and you guys can lead us in music tonight. Lord, thank you for this evening. We thank you for um, just a time to be back in your presence and to hear from you. We ask that you would be with our musicians. We ask that you'd be with our speaker, Lord. Just anoint them, and uh, we just thank you for the messengers that they have been already. In your name, amen. in his blood perfect submission all is at rest I and my Savior am happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness and lost in his love. Join us on the chorus, will you? This is my story. Oh 
echoes of mercy and whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising myself. You know, this morning when um, Pastor Tim was preaching, I was thinking about my own prayer life. And um, a while back, I had told Mike, I said, you know, I just need a place to get away. I just need a place to just get away from all the distractions of the world. So he took this uh, pool ho- uh, supply place that we had, our a little shed, and he transformed it into this most beautiful prayer house. And I have so enjoyed that, being able to be in that prayer house. Um, It's big enough. I can can mentor some college girls on Thursday nights, and it's been a a real delight, and it's been a a great thing for my prayer life. However, in October, we had a retreat. It was a teen retreat. And um, Grace, uh, my niece, came and spoke for the retreat. It was at your wandering wheels, by the way. Thank you so much for having that place. It's been wonderful for our teens especially. And uh, we were at, um, at Wandering Wheels, and she's, she's speaking, and she says, I've been doing this thing called getting on my knees for prayer. And she said, you know, it, it's like it, it just changed my prayer life. And I've continued to do that. And what we're going to do is, in a little bit, we're going to get down on our knees and we're going to um, have prayer like that. And i got to be honest, I was the cook. So in my head, I'm arguing with God. I'm like, I can't get down there. I'll never get back up. And I'm just like coming up with all these things of what, you know. And God just knocked me on the head and said... You are a sponsor, you are to be the example, and you need to get on your knees. And I got down on my knees, and I'm like, okay, God, I've had a lot of prayer time with you. What do you want me to give to you? And I was, at that time, really struggling because I had a play up in my head that I needed to get down on paper, and time was running short, and I needed to get it down there. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm down here. Show me. Show me what you want. So I prayed through that, and uh, God immediately released the entire play out of my mind onto the paper the very next day, mind you. Got home on Monday from the retreat, got ready to have my prayer time. God said, down on your knees. 
I'm like, God, you want me to do that again? Like, it took me a really hard time to get up, you know. And God said, that's where I want you. And that's where I've been since October. It took my young knees. I mean, I've prayed on my knees before, but not on a consistent daily basis getting down there. And I just want to tell you, and if you're not doing this, challenge you, because there is a different level with Jesus on your knees. Anybody got an amen for that one? I'm telling you, if you haven't been down on a consistent basis daily, there's just this presence of Jesus that comes. And so I have thanked God for putting that on Grace's heart. You know, usually it's us that are teaching the younger ones, but she taught me that's where I needed to be, and I followed what God wanted. Um, to, tonight, we're going to have each of you, or not everyone, but real quickly, name a name of God. Jehovah. I've been studying um, the names of God, and uh, immutable is one that I learned that he is unchangeable. Boy, in a world that everything's changing, how awesome is that? And the others? Let's sing about his wonderful name and stand to our feet as we sing. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master. i 
what a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. <coughs> you may be seated.
the darkness we were waiting without hope without a light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And, and the, the dead, dead raised from the tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit hit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel and shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three in one god of glory majesty praise forever to the king of kings praise forever to the king of kings Stand and sing our prayer chorus. <clears throat> Desperate for you, I 
surrender. Father, we're here tonight. Fill us, we pray. Lord, I, I ask that uh, as you fill us this evening, that as we um, just get renewed this evening, heading into our work weeks, Lord, that uh, everyone we come into contact with, everyone that we encounter has an opportunity to just experience you because of the feeling that you've given us this evening. Lord, may this just be a different week for us. May it be one where we are just so drawn to you that um, we are here wanting to surrender it all, as we've sang, Lord. If there's any part of our lives that, Lord, we have not given to you, that we have not turned over to you, that, Lord, that we are struggling with control, Lord, that this would be a week that we just give it to you, that you begin to have your way in our lives, Lord. And as you begin to do that, Lord, um, just the influence that we begin to have and the, and the love, as we talked about today, that we get to share on others. Lord, I pray that you would continue to just uh, be a part of this service. We are in your presence, and you are going to speak to us. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to listen with open ears and open hearts, Lord, as you begin to um, just do your work in us. We thank you for the groundwork that you've laid today. And, and Lord, understanding, um, Lord, that we do not need to step without your direction, Lord. And I, I just pray that um, you would just continue to be in this service, fill this service, Lord with just more of you, and we just say thank you for the God that you are. We thank you for the blessings you pour out on us, and, and we get a lavish in every day. But Lord, I pray that you'd help us not to take it for granted. Lord, just help us. Help us to be servants of you. In your name.
I thank you for um, being here this morning. What a great time of uh, worship we had, and it's just an honor for Jamie and I to be here to um, serve alongside you and um, to wait on the Lord, and seek His presence, and be renewed and revived. How many of you just want a, want a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit? Just a, a, new, a new thing. Um, I think it's the longing of all of our hearts. This morning in uh, our Sunday school class, uh, uh, our breakfast, which was uh, wonderful. I'll be back next Sunday. Uh, for bre- and, and for lunch, uh, by the way. That was great, too. Um, but anyways, I, I told the story. If, if you weren't there, I, I, I don't want to take the time to recapitulate the the um, a move that Jamie and I made from Arkansas and, and uh, to Indianapolis where we pastored for seven years, seven wonderful years, and but the pain of, um, the pain of uh, obedience and the, the pain of saying yes to Jesus, you know, you know uh, sometimes we can flower, flower our yes up to the Lord to, to make it sound like it's all hunky-dory. But if you've been following Jesus for very long, you know that while there's joy at, at the end of circumstances, saying yes to the Lord can have some painful components. Can I, can I get a, an amen on that? So one of our painful stories of, of our departure from Arkansas was leaving our, our family and, and uh, the separation and the loss that, that we felt, and yet in and through it all, God was working to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think or imagine because that's just how God works. In all that process, my parents who had moved to Conway to retire there with us um, after coming home from China, my mom um, was probably in the middle stages of Alzheimer's. And when we left um, Arkansas to move to Indianapolis, uh, my parents chose to move to Indianapolis with us because my sister was a distance away, and, and so they knew that uh, they would need help, and we were available, and we wanted to, and so they, they moved. These were very difficult years for our family. You talk about You talk about loss. Um, Alzheimer's is one of those diseases, as some of you probably know, where our loved one or friend uh, uh, dies before they die. And um, we went through all of those emotions of mom losing her memory and Jamie and I receiving phone calls from my mom several times um, a day there toward the end. I'm saying, Tim, there's a strange man in my house, not recognizing uh, my dad, her husband. And um, for a few um, months there in in Arkansas, uh, in in Indianapolis, we were dealing with the loss of, of leaving those that we had become familiar with and our family. And then now we're in the process of of losing my mother to this terrible disease of Alzheimer's and right along with it my, my dad was in a state of decline and, and it was a very tumultuous time. Our yes to the Lord was one of the most beautiful yeses that we've experienced and yet we experienced great loss in the process. You understand that, don't you? And so um, we... Um, in the course of time, they moved to Indianapolis, and within a few months, my mom was in a memory care facility, and within a few months, uh, she was uh, in, in heaven. You know, you, you never know how God will work, but um, God was a blessing throughout that season of loss, and we all know what it feels like to have loss. How many of you have lost something, have experienced a loss Let's just say, um, let's just say, through the last three years going into COVID, you experienced a, a, a physical, mental, emotional, family loss of some kind. Uh, could you lift your hand? 
many, many of us. Um, one of the things that we're dealing with in a, in a sense of loss since this whole pandemic is we've a loss of normalcy and a loss of independence and a loss of freedom and a loss of routine and a loss of jobs and a loss of gathering together and a loss of church attendance and a loss of volunteers and a loss of, uh, of, of finances and, and a loss of life. And many are too familiar, all too familiar with the, the loss of a failed marriage. Or a job that cuts you loose. Or the loss that comes from betrayal. Or, or a loss that comes from disappointment. There are even the, the losses of our own bad habits and our own hands, our bad ideas, our addictions, our poor decisions. Sometimes regret is one of the toughest losses that we have to overcome because some things can't be repaid and some things can't be redone and all we can do is live with the consequences, losses. Some of the most impactful forms of losses can occur because you've surrendered yourself to God's will. I remember when I was a, a, a young person um, my junior year in, in, in high school, and maybe it was my senior year, but I was on my way to Olivet, and I knew God was beginning to stir my spirit about going into ministry, and I knew I didn't want to do what my dad did. Uh, and so I, I sort of bargained with the Lord. I'll go into full-time Christian ministry, but I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into music, and I'm, I'm going to be a worship leader. Back then it was a music minister. Thank God he spared congregations all over the land for me being their music minister. But I, um, I remember as I was preparing to go to Olivet, I, I, I knew I had to leave some of my friends to the, to, to, to the curb. They were operating in ways, doing things that uh, were not... Uh, 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 a kosher that were, did not align with a Christian lifestyle, and and pretty soon they just stopped calling, because Kellerman's going to say no, and so I felt the the loss of just being obedient to the will of God. Well, uh, a few weeks ago I was reading in in Matthew chapter twenty eight, and um, this is the. The, the tail end of the book of Matthew and he's tying things up and Jesus is getting ready to give his, um, his ultimate um, um, commission uh, to the disciples and it's, it's that whole section. He's going to uh, ascend to the Father and, and I was just reading along in Matthew 28 and there's a short little phrase that caught my attention. In Matthew 28, verse 11, we read these four words. Then the eleven disciples. I, I knew something was there, and so I, I read it again. Then the eleven disciples. Then the eleven disciples. And so then I started to visualize what the disciples were feeling. You know, I, I, I tried to pinpoint. It just seemed like something was missing. And then, then it dawned on me, literally, something is missing. They were eleven instead of twelve. And if you count Jesus, they were eleven instead of thirteen. And so I began to imagine the disciples as they were making their way to the Mount of Olives as, as, God, as Jesus had uh, uh, told them to, 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 to go. And I imagine them as a group of 11 instead of 12. You know, a, a, um, a loss of one makes a big difference when all you've got is 12. 
Maybe the disciples were feeling loss. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they weren't. But, you know, maybe Judas was a pain. You know, he's a bean counter. And, you know, maybe he was a little difficult. You, you have a wonderful bean counter here at, at Bluffton Church of the Nazarene. Far from old Judas. But, you know, he, he had some comments to be made about how money was spent in, in the New Testament. We know some of those stories. So, so, so maybe he was a little bit of a, a, a pain. And they were glad he was gone. But may, maybe, maybe he was a joy. And they were just shocked that anything could happen to Judas. All we know is that there were, there was once 12 and now there are 11. And it got me thinking, what do you do in the face of loss? What do you do when you're going through life and all of a sudden everything is turned upside down and, and you, uh, on, on one day you're operating on, on all cylinders and all of a sudden you're, you, you, you've lost two. I began to write some things down that I saw out of the word and and I just I just thought t tonight we sort of take a healing approach and just talk about the, the the shepherding love of Jesus and how he can help us in our losses because if there's one thing the devil wants to do he he wants to capitalize on what we've lost and and tell us that there's no hope for tomorrow that we've just got to settle with what we've got and I want to remind us again that we have a sovereign God who's who's wanting to lavish his love on us if we will just if we will just surrender the loss to him first thing i picked up was out of verse 16, this little line, the last part of verse 16, I would call it 16b, Matthew 28, 16b, we read these words, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And, and, and when we're going through losses, this is the first principle, if you're wanting to write a number one in some, some words right here, when you're experiencing loss, it's very important, here it is, to do what Jesus tells you to do. They, they were going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Now, the Bible is full of specifics on, on what to do when there are scenarios of loss. Here's a quick list. When you have been betrayed, forgive. When you've been taken advantage of, go the extra mile. When someone becomes your enemy, love and pray for them. When someone has a problem with you, go and make it right. If you've wronged someone, go and make it right. Before you scrutinize the speck in someone else's eye, remove the board in yours. Now, culture is full of advice on what we ought to do when we experience loss, when we get the short end of the stick, when we've drawn the short straw. The, the world has, a, has a advice to us about, about balling up our fist and bowing up and, and trying to get even and fight for your position. I want you to hear the words of Jesus in Matthew 5. You've heard it said. Eye for an eye and tooth for a truth. But I tell you, don't resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. If anyone wants to take your shirt, hand them your coat. If anyone forces you to go a mile, go, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you. Don't turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Verse 43. You've heard it said out there in the world. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. A word of warning. When you're going through loss... When you're struggling with loss, when you're trying to fight through the emotions and trying to get a handle on loss, whatever it might be, the first thing that I want to point out is we've got to turn our ears 
off from the world and we need to focus on the word of God and hear what God has to say and do that. Do what God says to do. I, uh, one of my joys, um, I don't get to do it very often, um, but one of the things I enjoy doing is scuba diving. I was certified um, at a young age as a teenager and, and I uh, was a rescue diver on the local fire department uh, as, a, as a, a graduate of high school. And I just enjoy that sort of thing. And one of the things that they, they taught us in our search and recovery class was that when you're in murky water and, and when you get uh, disoriented, because when you're in certain types of water and, and you're, you're buoyant and you're neutral, sometimes you don't know what's up and what's down. And, and so they taught us a trick. They, they taught us a little trick to know, to get, to get in perspective. That when you're disoriented, have the presence of mind to exhale and follow the bubbles. Because which direction will bubbles always go? And you follow the smallest bubble so you don't climb too quickly. I just want to remind you, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but we live in an age where the word of God is, is I, 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 unfortunately, it's, it's put to the side, but I want to remind us tonight that the Bible serves as the bubbles, that when all seems lost, it will be our perspective to our God in heaven. Amen. So I don't know what you're going through tonight, what you're struggling with. Whose ear uh, uh, is, um, uh, uh, whose mouth your ear is, is bent next to? I, I just want to remind you that counsel is good, but the word of God stands forever. <laughs> Second thing that I see when we're going through loss is go in search of Jesus. Verse 16, I love this. This was the purpose of their, the trip. It was to, to see Jesus. And, and we know that's why they were going to, to Galilee and the Mount of Olives because in, in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus, in verse 10, Jesus says to the women who meet him, um, at the, after the resurrection, they, they, he says, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. I give these disciples kudos and high fives. They were on their way on a mission, and their priority was that they were going to see Jesus. We talked about that this morning. I won't unpack it. But it's interesting Jesus said, tell them to meet me there. They will find me there. And that little phrase, find me there, comes from an original essence of a word, meaning to arrange. So what Jesus was literally saying to these women and then on to the disciples, that Jesus, in, in the midst of their loss, he had arranged for them to find him. I think that's a beautiful picture. Let me tell you what, brothers and sisters, in the loss that you might have or are going through, Jesus has not left us high and dry. He might not, and I don't believe he, he causes bad, I don't believe God caused COVID. I think it's because we live in this world we live in, but I promise you this, Jesus has arranged to be found. He's been arranged to be found. He, he was arranged. My, 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 my family, Jesus arranged to be found when, when my mom didn't know who we were anymore. Jesus arranged to be found when, when our loved ones are in distress or when we've experienced tragedy or when, when our mind is in turmoil. Listen, Jesus is the kind of God who arranges for us to find him. But the key is we've got to look for him. Are you looking for Jesus? Something else caught my eye in this passage of Scripture. When you... 
see him, worship him. We read in verse 17 that when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him. You know, we've sort of stereotyped the word worship. We, we sort of lumped it into the song time in our worship services. Do you know that right now this is worship? Did you know when we take the offering, it's worship? You know, when we greet one another, it's worship? It's all worship. And, and the disciples, when they saw him, they, they worshiped him. I wish I could have been there to see the excitement. I, I love to watch those, those videos on YouTube where a, a military person is coming home and meeting their family for the first time in a year or so, whatever, and the, the joyful reunion. Well, I sort of picture it in, in, in that way. But that, that, the word worship here, we've, we've sort of built fences around it around its real meaning, but the word, it, it literally means uh, uh, extravagant. It mean, it, 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 uh, the original word describes it like a, a dog licking a master's a hand to fawn or to crouch or to prostrate oneself in, in homage. Worship is, is messy sometimes. There's no better solution or activity in the midst of loss than than worship. I don't know if uh, God will lead me to tell my story and his healing of my uh, depression years ago, but in that season of time, one of my best defenses was the Word of God and, and worship. As I told you this morning, I, I grew up in Taiwan and and uh, my parents being missionaries, and, and our house was on the college campus on a, on a hill, and, and at, at the, the bottom of the hill there was this village, and like many villages, most villages in Taiwan, uh, there was a, a central temple. And that's where the people, the Buddhists, would go and they would, they would do their worship and, and pray to, to Buddha and, and um, cast their incense at the altars and they would chant and they would clang cymbals and, and periodically through the year they would have their grand celebrations um, where, where this was just exponentially uh, um, uh, blossomed in, in volume and, and that noise would filter up, um, it seemed like would filter up the, the, the hill where we lived from that village and, and the, 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 that, that eerie music would, would kind of uh, um, seep into our, our home through the, the cracks and the, the, uh, the uh, spaces uh, available. And I didn't recognize it uh, then as a, as a young boy, but, but now I, I, I understand that it was just the sheer presence of evil. You know that, and, and it would go on and on and on and on, and, and I can still remember, I didn't understand the strategy at the time, but I can still remember my mom or my, my dad going to the, the record player. Anybody know what that is? Most everyone in this room knows what that is. And mom or dad, or, or it, it, we also had a reel-to-reel. And we, mom or dad, would put on gospel music. We'd put on, some of you will remember, the Bill Gaither Trio. Or the old Imperial, Imperials. That's where I learned to sing bass. And that music would begin to fill the airspace in our home and we would sing along, and, and I, I didn't know really what my mom and dad were doing, but now I recognize that they were replacing the sound of the enemy with the sound of heaven. And they were, they were allowing worship to into the airspace, and in no time it just felt like all that evil left the home and out where it came from, and our, our place was filled with the peace and joy. I, I'm just... I'm just reminding us today that when we're in a place of loss, we need to find our prayer station, Mary Beth, whatever it was that, that you go into, the, your prayer shack, <clears throat> and, and, and tell God who he is and worship. 
Here's a, another perspective that I learned in this passage of 12 becoming 11. We read in verse 17, the last part of verse 17, we read these words of Matthew, after they worshipped him. Get this now, after they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. Here's my principle. Give yourself a break. I mean, it was just the 11. And when you're thinking about doubters, our minds would typically go to doubting Thomas. But Matthew says, of the 11, some were doubtful. I would submit to you that Thomas wasn't the only doubtful one. He was just loud mouth enough to let the secret out. And, and, and so now we read about it every year in the Easter story. I, I would submit that more than just Thomas was, was doubting this whole resurrection thing. And, and it just reminds me, listen, I don't, I don't want to say that we should live in the land of doubts. But I, I just want to, I just want to loosen up and give some margin here that, that sometimes we ought to give ourselves a break because we're not, we're not intended to understand everything. I, I can't understand all the ways of God. I can't understand why it is that Jesus can raise Lazarus from the dead, but he couldn't heal my mom's mind. I don't understand why God could heal my dad 25 years ago from pancreatic cancer, but he couldn't heal my mom. And I just realized that I could either, I could either get really mad about that or I could give myself a break and know that God is God and some things I don't get, and sometimes it's frustrating. I don't need to be guilty about it or feel shame about it. I don't want to live in the land of doubt because if we dwell there, then we'll just become negative, bitter people. You know, these, these, were, the, these were the 11, soon to be 12 again, who would, who would begin the church that would extend to this very day around the world, and some of them were doubters. Don't, don't dwell there. But you might just need to give yourself a break. Loss is real. Your loss is real. But I come tonight just as a reminder to let you know that Jesus loves you. And there are four important things that I have learned. Do what Jesus tells you to do. Look for Jesus. Stop looking for the answer. Look for Jesus. And let him give the answer when he's ready. When you find Jesus, when you get in arm's length, when you're sitting in church on Sunday morning and the last thing you want to do is worship, worship anyways. Come on, church. When you're driving in your car and all your thoughts are whirling, Worship. And some, someone here tonight just needs to surrender and give yourself a break and know that God loves you. And if you'll do what he tells you to do, if you'll look for Jesus, if you worship him, It'll all come out, as my dad would say, it'll all come out in the wash. 
I'd like you to stand with me. Mary Beth, if you could come and play. I, I don't know. This is so personal. <clears throat> but if, if you're dealing with loss, now listen, this, this is going to take some honesty because we can, we can, we can brush it off. Here we are in the presence of Jesus. And our shepherd, his arms are wide open. And if you're dealing with a place of loss, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, you name it. He's here today. And I just want to do what Jesus, what the disciples did. I just want to bring our loss to him. Do what he says. Hear what he's got to say. And know that he will carry you through. So before we pray closing prayer tonight, I, I can't do this part for you. But if you'd like to come and bring that circumstance to the Lord, these altars are open. And we'll close in prayer. Come as God leads you. father who experienced the loss of his son is uniquely able to minister to you at your point of need. Isn't that good? Maybe we can have some prayer support here with these men who have gathered to pray. Maybe as prayers come and you have that need You're, these altars are open Jesus is here I know many, I know you can pray where you're, where you're standing. I understand that. And if you'd like to be seated for this time of prayer, I want you to feel comfortable in doing that as well. Well, let's pray. Father in heaven, we just come to you tonight with grateful hearts. Hey God, you, you, you came to save the lost, the lost sinner, the lost sheep, the lost prodigal. In every occasion, you arrange to be found, and we're so grateful for that, oh God. But I thank you for the truth of this little, these little, these four little words that remind us that the founders of the early church had loss. And yet in their frustration and in their fear and in their confusion, they, they did what you told them to do. Your word was key. They sought you out, Jesus. They worshiped you with abandon. And Lord, we're a little encouraged that some of them were doubters. 
And even Jesus didn't condemn them, but loved them. And so tonight, God, our brothers and sisters here around this altar and no doubt perhaps throughout this um, sanctuary, praying over losses, the loss of life, the loss of circumstances, the loss of health. God, I don't know what the circumstances are, but God, I, I pray in Jesus' name that, that you would wrap your loving arms around each one and that where there are questions and confusions, that God, in, in our moments, that you would give us strength to do what your word tells and to seek after Jesus and turn the world off and to worship you. And even though it's so difficult, God, and in our confusion, Lord, understand that God understands that we don't understand and that he'll help us through. So Lord, on this Sunday night, this precious people who have gathered in to hear your word, I pray that they would hear your word, your truth tonight. My child, I love you. Listen to what I say. Find Jesus. Worship with abandon and trust me to work out the details. And I pray, God, that the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Deliver us, God, from having to have all the answers. And help us just seek you. Lord, Whatever our losses might be here tonight, help us not to waste it. Lord, help us to rise up from this place and as our healing takes place and we become stronger and stronger through our losses, may you give us the opportunity to share the good news of Jesus and how you've helped us to be overcomers. So Lord, we're, we're like the disciples. We're going to rise up from our time with you and we're going to march down the mountain. And we're going to enter the world of tomorrow and we're going to live out our faith. But all the while, Lord, remind us to seek your word, seek your son, seek to worship you alone. And with a grateful heart and the knowledge that you will go with us, I pray this in the strong and mighty name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. We want to give freedom for those to keep on praying. So let's just allow that.
Let's stand and have a closing prayer. Can we do that? I want to thank you for coming tonight. Don't forget tomorrow night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, 6.30. And uh, invite somebody. You know, if you see somebody and you know them, just, hey, we can come. Uh, we're having some great services. And I'd like you to be a part of it. And that's how actually church grows. I don't know if you realize that, but just inviting people. <laughs> and uh, you say, well, yeah, but they'll say no. That's okay. Jesus was told no a lot of times. And yet, uh, look how amazing the faith is of Christian brothers and sisters across the world today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the words of, of Tim. And ask that, Lord, as we leave here, that, Lord, whatever was lost has been found, that we just kind of journey down that road with you. And we just listen and obey. And know that, Lord, you're in the midst of everything that we go through. There's nothing that doesn't go across your path. The great news is you'll be with us at all times. You promise that, Lord. Because if we know you, you as our Lord and Savior, you're in us. <laughs> so you, you're there in the midst of everything that goes on. And may we just sense your presence at every step of the journey. People need wisdom tonight. Give them the wisdom they need. Your wisdom and encourage their hearts. We pray this in your name and all God's people said, amen. Have a good night.